Hello and welcome to this short webcast looking at IFRS 15, the new revenue recognition standard issued by the ISB and the FASB. I'm Tony DeBell, a partner in Global Accounting Consulting Services, and I'll spend the next few minutes summarising one of the key aspects of the new standard. When is revenue recognised at a point in time, and when is it recognised over time? The new model is based on a five-step approach. Management first identifies its contracts with customers and identifies performance obligations, the distinct goods or services that have been promised to those customers. Management then estimates the consideration that it expects to be entitled to, known as a transaction price, and allocates that transaction price to each performance obligation. Revenue is recognised when a performance obligation is satisfied by transferring a distinct good or service to a customer. Existing IFRSs include two primary standards dealing with revenue, IS18 for the sale of goods and services and IS11 for construction contracts. Revenue from the sale of goods is generally recognised when risks and rewards have passed to the customer. Service and construction contract revenue is generally recognised over time using the percentage of completion method. IFRS 15 has replaced the separate models for goods, services and construction contracts with a single model that distinguishes between performance obligations satisfied at a point in time and those satisfied over time. The recognition framework is applied to each performance obligation separately. That is, it is applied to each distinct good or service. The recognition model requires that management first considers whether a performance obligation is satisfied over time. A performance obligation is satisfied over time if one of three criteria are met. Revenue is recognised over time if the customer simultaneously receives and consumes all of the benefits of the entity's work as the entity performs. This criterion typically cap captures typical service arrangements. For example, a daily cleaning service or a security service where the customer receives the benefit of a clean or a secure office as the service is being performed. Revenue is also recognised over time if performance creates or enhances an asset that the customer controls. This criterion is likely to capture many construction contract arrangements. For example, building a house on a customer's land where the customer controls the work in progress throughout the arrangement. Finally, Revenue is recognised over time when performance does not create an asset with alternative use and the entity has an enforceable right to payment for performance completed to date. This third criterion is more complicated and requires consideration of both whether an asset has an alternative use and the nature of any rights to payment. So let's look at this in more detail. So, when does an entity's work not create an asset with an alternative use? The most common example is a typical service arrangement where there is no asset created, for example, legal services. It also applies when an asset is created but has no alternative use to the supplier, for example, the construction of a highly customised asset that could not be sold to another customer. The standard is specific that an asset does not have an alternative use if it cannot be redirected to another customer, either legally or practically. This might happen, for example, in connection with a speci specialised asset that can only be used by a specific customer, or an asset where the contract prevents the entity selling to another customer. It is also necessary that the entity has the right to payment for work completed to date if the customer cancels the contract. This does not need to be in the form of an upfront payment or progress payments. It could be in other forms, such as a cancellation penalty. Judgment will be required when the right to payment relies on a cancellation provision or milestone payments. The key consideration is whether the payment reflects the work performed to date, including a reasonable profit margin. The standard is explicit that recovery of cost incurred to date is not a right to payment. If a performance obligation is satisfied over time, revenue is recognised by measuring the progress towards satisfaction of the performance obligation. This might be determined using an output or an input method, whatever best reflects the transfer to the customer. If a performance obligation is not satisfied over time, revenue is recognised when control is transferred to the customer. The standard includes indicators of when control is transferred. For example, the entity has a present right to payment for the asset. The customer has legal title to the asset, unless legal title is retained solely as protection against the customer's failure to pay. The customer has physical possession of the asset. The customer has the significant risks and rewards of ownership of the asset or the customer has accepted the asset. 
No single indicator is definitive and all indicators should be considered when determining the point of transfer. The standard also contains implementation guidance on a number of specific areas including repurchase options, consignment and bill and hold arrangements. These are just some of the highlights around determining whether a performance obligation is satisfied at a point in time or over time. An overview of the standard and more information on the specific aspects of IFRS 15 are available through webcasts and industry specific guidance designed to help people start thinking about implementing the new standard. Keep up to date by following the news on PwC Inform.